The summer of 2024 will go down in American history as one filled with unexpected political twists and turns. So what happened? It all started on June 27th when former President Donald Trump and President Joe Biden met in Atlanta for a debate, a critical moment in their rematch. Biden's poor performance, filled with stumbles and awkward pauses, alarmed Democrats, raising doubts about whether he could beat Trump in November. It was really hard to watch. Like, I wanted to turn it off almost immediately, um, but I somehow powered through. It's the, uh, it's the race to the bottom all over again. Uh, last night was the mummy versus the dummy, so. But Biden and his team said it was just one bad night and insisted he was pressing forward with his campaign. I don't walk as easy as I used to. I don't speak as smoothly as I used to. I don't deb debate as well as I used to. But I know what I do know. I know how to tell the truth. Then, on July 13th, a would-be assassin in Butler, Pennsylvania, opened fire on Trump at a campaign rally, striking his ear and killing a man in the crowd. You know, when I was standing up yesterday and everybody was telling me, sit down, I'm like, dude, if I was going to take a bullet, I'd gladly take it for that man. Like, you know, I, I mean, like, he's got our back. The assassination attempt stunned the nation and brought back into focus the threats of political violence. Regardless of my politics leaning towards Trump, nobody, no, no, nobody, 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 no political figure should have to worry about their life being in danger. Two days after the assassination attempt, the Republican National Convention began in Milwaukee. While accepting the nomination for president, Trump spoke about that day in Pennsylvania. It can only be a bullet and moved my right hand to my ear, brought it down. My hand was covered with blood, just absolutely blood all over the place. Then on July 21st, under mounting pressure from Democrats, Biden announced he was ending his bid for re-election. He's someone who's willing to step aside from power um, and not put himself first, put the country first. Um, I think it's a huge deal, and I think it just shows the type of leader he is. And, you know, we took all that in and we said we got to go thank him. I give my heart and my soul to our nation, like so many others. I've been blessed a million times in return. Biden threw his support behind Vice President Kamala Harris to take on Trump, igniting a resurgence of energy in the Democratic Party. So the momentum in this race is shifting. And there are signs that Donald Trump is feeling it. It's kind of chaotic, but I am really excited that Kamala is running. Um, I did get a little bit nervous when we had found out that Trump was going to be running again, but um, when they had kind of did that switcheroo and had Kamala come in, it kind of gave a lot more hope. It just feels very positive, um, which is, I mean, just obviously completely the opposite of, of Trump's campaign, just in general. It's just so negative. It's, it's nice to hear such a positive, hopeful message. Harris then headed to the Democratic National Convention in Chicago, where she accepted the party's nomination for president. Let's get out there. Let's vote for it. And together, let us write the next great chapter in the most extraordinary. 